Hi and welcome back to my channel. My name is Liz and today I want to show you all the creepy books I'm going to read in November. So um, I'm doing a color scheme in case you're new here. I read one color of book of book covers basically um, each month and for November I decided you know what this is the creepiest time in my opinion um, of the year and that's why I decided to go for <laughs> this weird color scheme that seems to be going on with a lot of my books um, that's sort of like night but like not completely dark I don't know this is the color I decided to go with I have not decided what the color is called yet um, but I'm really excited about this TBR because there are so many books that I've been wanting to read for a while and one of these books has been on my shelves for at least 12 years and that's Orhan um, Pamuk's um, Other Colors, Writings on Life, Art, Books and Cities. Um, so he is, I think, a Turkish writer who won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 2006. My dad is a huge fan of him, um, of his writing, and he gave me this book in Switzerland, I think back when I was like 17 or so. It's been ages um, and it's been on my shelves for so long. So I decided, you know what, I'm just, I, I have to read it this year. Um, this is, uh, oh, I should tell you what it's about. Um, this is basically a collection of his writings, um, including his acceptance speech for the Nobel Prize in 2006. And I think collections like these are always a great way to get to know an author um, because it's such a mix of their writing. i um, so excited for this one. Uh, the next one I play Simon of Sa a Savage Reads uh, for because he totally fixed me on this book and that's called The Haunting of Henry Twist by Rebecca F. John. Um, so this place in 1926 in London and we meet Henry and Ruby, <clears throat> a young couple with a child on the way and um, Ruby unfortunately dies in an accident and leaves Henry alone with um, their young infant daughter. One day he meets this guy called Jack Turner who doesn't remember anything about his life except Henry's name and his own. And he says, you know, I, I just I have to be in your life because you're the only person I remember. And um, Henry feels this magnetic pull um, to him and he doesn't know who this person is, but he feels like he knows him. And I'm really interested to find out what the mystery is in this book. Um, another first World War book or early 20th century book is The Pull of the Stars by Emma. Donoghue, um, I think this came out last year in the midst of the pandemic, I think. Um, yeah, this came out in 2020 and it's about the last pandemic. It's about the Spanish flu in Ireland. Um, and it follows a young nurse, Julia Power, and two other women, Dr. Kathleen Lynn, who is in the run um, from the police, and a young volunteer helper. Brittany Sweeney and they all work at a hospital where they treat patients who um, have uh, the Spanish flu and all of them are di dying I think. Um, this is supposed to be a real tear jerker but absolutely beautifully written and I can't wait to read this. The next book is really really different. It's a retelling of a classic fairy tale that we all know, Cinderella. Uh, it's called The Shadow in the Glass, A Dare to Make a Wish by Ja Harbut. Um, so this retells the story of Cinderella who makes a wish to her fairy godmother who turns out to be, I think, a bit of a devil or a witch. Uh, because in exchange for the fairy tale life um, that she wants, she has to give away her soul. And um, I don't know what else this book is going to be about, but I love fairy tale retelling, so I'm excited about this one. The next book has been on my shelves for ages, and I don't know why, because I absolutely love the author's first book, The Age of Miracles. Um, if you haven't read, read The Age of Miracles yet, do yourself a favor, it's such a good book. And um, her second novel, Karen Thompson, Thompson Walker's second novel is called The Dreamers. 
and it's about a small town that's um, ravaged by a really weird illness where people just don't wake up. Um, they're alive, but they just don't wake up and no one knows why, um, how the patients feel, like, are they still in there, are, like, are they in a coma, what makes a person basically, like, is the soul or whatever you believe in still in there or are they just bodies and what do you do with them and um, the town is quickly um, closed off to the rest of the world so the illness doesn't spread because no one knows how the illness is contracted and it's about how the loved ones of the people who contract this illness um, deal with the situation and yeah I really think I'm gonna love this one. Um, so the next uh, two books are beloved classics by, by this point and one of them is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. Um, I read The Great Alone, Alone a couple of months ago, really loved um, the book and this is her most famous book. Um, so this is a uh, place in the Second World War. We follow two uh, kids, one is, um, no sorry, two women. Um, one is Vienne Moriac. Uh, and her sister Isabel. So Vienne um, has to say goodbye to her husband who has to fight in the front against the Nazis and she I think is left alone with um, a young child I think and with her is her young sister Isabel who is a rebellious 18 year old who falls in love I think with a Nazi. And it's about how these two women um, survive um, the Nazi occupation of Paris. That's all I know about it. People went crazy about this book back when it came out, so I have really high hopes with this one. The next one is the one of the kids. <laughs> I confused the two books. And that's All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Durr. I decided to finally, finally, finally read this book because his, just, his new book, The Cuckoo's Clock, I think, just came out. Um, it's receiving a lot of praise and uh, I wanna get to that one as well. But first, I'm going to read his most famous book, and this also plays in um, France during the Nazi occupation. And these, this book follows two kids. One is called Marie Loré and um, the orphan Werner. Uh, so Marie Loré is um, lives alone with her dad in Paris. He works at the Natural History Museum, and when she turns six, she goes blind. So he makes a miniature um, uh, model of her neighborhood um, so she can find her way alone in the dark or blindly. And when the Nazis come to town, um, they flee to their great uncle's house. Um, and with them, they have a really precious but dangerous jewel from the Natural History Museum. And the other storyline follows Werner, who is a young orphan, who is really good with radios, and that's why he rises quite quickly in the um, Hitler Youth. And yeah, that's all I know about it. It's supposed to be amazing. It's won so much praise and won the Pulitzer Prize back when it came out, which I think was in 2014. So this is probably going to be a really great book. One book I'm really excited about, but also sort of afraid of, is Stuart Turton's um, The Devil and the Dark Water. So he's the author of The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, which was a book I just could not, could not turn down. Like, I, I couldn't sleep because I hadn't finished the book. Like, it re literally kept me up at night. Um, so I know I have to find a day where I can get through all of this, otherwise I'm going to lose sleep. I, I already know that. Um, like, The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle was amazing. By the way, if you hear noise in the background, it's dishwasher, sorry. Um, so this book, it plays in 1634. It follows Samuel Pips, a um, great detective who's facing a trial of execution in Amsterdam and um, traveling with him is his lawyer bodyguard, Aaron Hayes, and there's also a noble woman, Sarah Wessel. And they all travel on this ship um, where really strange signs suddenly start to appear and there's this really creepy voice um, that whispers into people's ears that it's the voice can help them 
um, make free impossible wishes true, um, an impossible pursuit, an impossible theft, and an impossible mur murder. And yeah, there is something creepy going on this ship. This is the most Novemberish book uh, I think I'm gonna read this month. So yeah, I I have really high hopes for this one because I think it's gonna be just as amazing as the Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle and I can't wait to dig into this one. So yeah, that's my TBR for November. Have you read any of these books? Did you like any of them? Let me know down in the comments below. And I would also really love to know if you have any other books that you could recommend me for November. I will see you soon. Bye!